Bill, you know, I want to kind of finish the discussion that I didn't have a chance to finish this morning. Um, for those that were not aware, you know, I still do the ambrosia. I'm getting it out to family and friends. And uh, an elder had called me and wanted me to deliver their uh, ambrosia, so I had to get out. So right now I'm sitting at the hookah shop, as you can see. Got art, art around me, waiting for the CF to get here so I could talk with him about getting the studio together. I want to send shots out to Brother uh, Nehemiah for uh, for tuning in. I want to send shots out to Sister Gil Jackson. Um, thank you for joining. Um, those of you who may not be able to kind of watch it on YouTube, I mean on uh, Facebook, and uh, listen, you got things to do, you go to giamijourney.com. Let me type that in, Giami journey oops all right giami on those of you on facebook you go to g y e n y a m e journey at oops giami journey to my fault giami journey i'm at dot com y'all can follow there'll be no call ins today but y'all can type y'all stuff up um once you go to the blog if you listen you'll see the show will automatically start booting up you go down to the player you can either stop the player and look at some of the articles that i put up or uh, you could just listen in you know what i'm saying um, i want to kind of start the conversation because the thing that hit me when we was discussing or actually hit me when i was sitting in the tub is the question of why why Listen, why, as an African people in America, don't we have our own government? And the idea of forming a government within the community hit me hard because I'm like, shit, this shit is possible, right? What does a government do? A government supports the people in which it was formed by. So we don't have a, a government organization looking out for us. So now, I started doing some more research, and, and I remember that Marcus Garvey formed the UNIA and ACF. See, a lot of people miss out on the fact that Marcus Garvey organization was called UNIA slash ACF, which stood for African Community League. Now, what I want to do is right now is go to my phone and read to y'all what league means, okay? A league is a collection of people, countries, or groups that combine for a particular purpose, typical mutual protection, or cooperation. A league is basically another name for a government that's already functioning up under a governmental order, right? We are functioning under a governmental order, but this government does not have our best interests at heart. And in order for us to start getting what we need, we need to start forming a government that serves us. A group, a league that has uh, the purpose um, for mutual protection and cooperation. Now, one of the things that I start realizing, I'm at the hookah shop, so I'm doing my hookah. One of the things that I start wondering about is who is looking out for the interests of black folks who is speaking up for black folks and what we have is we have a bunch of cronies that have been hand selected um for no other reason than just to in a sense give us a voice to speak to the to what everybody else think we need we have not taken the time to form a group that speaks for us it can't happen within the church you know what I'm saying? It can't happen within the church. Why? Because the church separates us. Churches, my state, they all separate us because they're based on religion. What we need is a league, a collection of people, countries, or groups that combine for a particular purpose, typically mutual protection or cooperation. Who needs more protection and who needs more cooperation than us as a people? Right? We need to start building these organizations now. In Columbus, in particular, I've noticed, and one of the things that I'm 
I have been blessed in that I have come up through a community that I won't even say is conscious because I got to get away from that because the conscious piece kind of throws up a whole negative sh a whole negative shit because you done have these conscious lectures and everybody claiming to be conscious, right? And consciousness is cool. It's cool. Don't get me wrong. It's cool. But what we need is we don't only need to be awake because that's all consciousness means. We need we need action, which is I grew up in a nation building community where we have been trying to take action. I was put up under a mandate in my younger years. I didn't understand the mandate. Sometime I rebelled against it, right? But there was a mandate that was put before me by my elders, right? And the whole piece was we needed to build. We needed to start creating those institutions that would make it possible for us to function as a community, make it possible for us to function as a unified community so that we can get some of our needs met, right? So. I'm looking around, I'm like, oh, what organizations have been around long enough to do this that are mutual enough to where everybody that is involved can, one, get a vote, and two, have discussions about who is to be the leading body or leading group or leading individual that will be able to speak for the needs of the group. Every other, every other group that I have seen has this we don't necessarily have it in our community we don't necessarily have it in our community right we have individuals that are going rogue we have individuals that are sharing their pieces but do we have any groups within our community that can say hey i represent this people this group of people i've been voted in you know what i'm saying i have i'm able to move forward with an agenda has been laid out for me by this group so that I could speak on this issue, speak on these issues. No, we don't. No, we got random motherfuckers popping up on TV speaking for us. Really, when it comes down to it, random motherfuckers and, and celebrities speaking for us. We know that this does not get us what we need, right? And most of the time, the people that they are asking for opinions about black folks in America, usually the people that are asking for um, or speaking for us don't necessarily have our best interests at heart. Now, there's some things that go to this because we can have a long ass discussion about this shit. Long ass discussion because this is this is what this is this is the this is the major issue, right? As long as we stay confused. As long as we do not start electing individuals to represent us, we will always have this issue. We can't really tell people to shut up. You know why? Because we don't have nobody to really step up into the void that's there. So we, we're stuck with who they put up. Any celebrity, any athlete can come on and speak about issues that's going on with, with black America. And that's not right. You know what I'm saying? And we need to start shutting that shit down. You know what I'm saying? Because that 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 that's against the code. Right? So I know some of y'all like, brother, how Tim, well, how do you become if, if there is a league, how do you become part of that? I now, first off, that's not necessarily for me to decide, but I can give you some of my ideas, right? Because some of the things that I learned from studying my culture is this, right? All adults in our culture go through a process called rites of passage. Now, rites of passage is deeper than just you training individuals and teaching them how to be men and women. No, it ingrains the culture into those individuals. It ingrains the needs of the people into that individual. It lets that individual know that they are a small part of something much larger than themselves, and they need to be willing to sacrifice themselves to make sure that that community, that that culture continues growing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what's needed? Right? So now, there is an initiation process for each member of a culture. And if you do not go through that initiation process, you are considered a child in that culture, which means you don't get a vote. So what I'm saying is that in each of our communities, starting in Columbus, 
What I'm saying is that we need to formulate an initiation for individuals to be able to become part of the culture, part of the community. You cannot be an adult member. You could be a child, but you cannot be recognized in, as an adult in that community unless you have been in, initiated. Now, this is what I'm proposing for Columbus, right? Now, one of the things I have noticed in Columbus, I don't know if y'all have it in other cities, if there's anybody else listening or you might pick this up later. I don't know if you have a collective of nation builders or a collective of elders that are outside of the religious institutions that are based in uh, acquiring knowledge that you could go to and be like, boom, we trust you. Now, what are some of the first things that this, this league need to, to do? Now, I'm coming from a, a strictly cultural perspective, right? Because within culture, I believe you have an economic structure that is formulated because in order for a culture to live, it needs to make sure that it is able to manage the resources that it has has a political structure which means that leadership you know what i'm saying can be you know what i'm saying you could be moved into leadership you could be moved out of leadership right and i'm saying that when these type of leagues or these type of governments are formed in the community the people have to adhere to them right and in a sense adhere to the leadership but one of the problems we got is that everybody in our community believe that everybody is a leader and everybody is equal in our community. And I'm going to say that we got to get rid of that shit. All of us are not equal. All of us are not equal. I want you to name a society in the world where everybody is viewed as equal. So then I ask the question is, if it's not working in any other society, if it's not being used in any other society, and we see where everybody being the same has worked for us. Don't you think it's time for us to make some major changes? Right? You know what I'm saying? What I want to do, I want to open up the discussion. I wish I had the lines open, but I can't open the lines right now because you wouldn't be able to be heard. You know what I'm saying? We'll do this on another night, but I want y'all to kind of think about this. Right? As you looking at the white woman over my right, hand, my right shoulder, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to have to, I'm, I'm gonna have to switch that environment. You know, this is the quietest place that I could find where I could think without my daughters running up on me trying to steal the show. And I have to give my daughters their time. But the point is, family, the point is, we need to really become family. What initiation does, what initiation does, it allows us to test one another to see if we are really worthy to be family. Any place that anybody could come in and be part of, I don't want to belong to. And we need to really kind of start taking this perspective as a people. We need to make sure that those people that are outside understand that you just can't walk up in this motherfucker and have an opinion. I don't give a fuck about your opinion. You haven't, you haven't shed blood. You haven't completed any of the tasks that's necessary for you to be part. Sister Jill says, Hi, you are a small part of your culture and your responsibility is to know what the community needs and do your part to meet the need. That's right. You know what I'm saying? We have to function as a group. We have to we have to function as cells in a larger organism, which we are. But a lot of us aren't comfortable with that because humbleness have been ha, has been extracted from us. And many of us are still struggling with the religious beliefs, right? And I'm not just talking about Jesus. I'm not just talking about Heru. I'm not just talking about Islam. I'm not just talking about the comedic system. I'm not talking about those religious beliefs. We haven't got down to the core of the fact that your religion, I want y'all to listen to this talk, right? You demonstrate your religion by what you serve. Most of us are not Christians. Most of us are not Islam. Most of us are not Buddhists. Most of us are not Christians. We are capitalists. And we serve, we worship, and we go hard for that dollar. We don't believe in power, we believe in money. And 
because we believe in money and because money is paramount and because many of us have been taught get money is my coffee coming yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Get money. Get money, right? We remember. In, in, I'm doing the show. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, I'm at the Shisha Lounge. Y'all come down and join me. Yeah, right. Go ahead. Put your head in. Say what's up. Yeah. So it's that like um. So, this is a this is a I'm streaming live on Facebook on this one and on this one I'm on a podcast. So this one is the podcast. This is the actual show. I'm just talking to my fam that's that's tuning in on Facebook. Ain't that many people, but people come back later and check it out. All right, fam. So now I need y'all to I need y'all to get that right, and 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 we really need to start analyzing this because this was something that was placed on us. We place we place money above everything else. We've been taught that. My generation especially, we was taught that you need to go out and get that money. Some of us chose to go to college, some of us chose to hit the street. But we was told that money was the all important equalizer. When in fact it's not money at all. When we go back to our traditional culture, we realize that it wasn't the money that put somebody on top. It was the amount of people that they were connected to it was the culture and a lot of us can't deal with that right because it goes total counter towards what we've been taught here but when you look and you look at other cultures you see that they're using this this whole concept they're using this to build and we need to do it um sister jill say a formal league but initiations require all things are equal that's right we need to formulate a lead, right? Because we, 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 we might not have similar ideas. You know what I'm saying? Because this is the piece. The lead allows people to speak their, their truth, right? But then we're able to take votes from qualified members that can vote something in, and the leadership then acts upon what the group who has been initiation um, that have been initiated, all those members that are able to vote, vote, and that moves the agenda, right? We vote somebody in according to their agenda, right? Now, how do we start? One of the things I'm, I noticed in Columbus, because I pulled out of the, the, the nation-building community in Columbus for a while and just kind of observed, right? I wonder how you were going to dress capitals as a part of League's role and work. I don't understand. I wonder how you were going to dress capital as part of the league's role and work. Oh, now, now, the issue is that we place capital first. That's that's what got us wrong. That's what got us fucked up right now. Because we place money as the thing for our young people to chase. And those of you that are in my age grade, those of you that are in my age grade, you witnessed that. Because they sent us to college, not so that we could better our community, so that we could get a good job. And the job is about bringing in money, right? Now what we need to do is change the focus to getting people to start get educating themselves so that they could benefit and build the community. Primary. It has to be their primary function. You are to bring value to your culture. You are to bring value, you know, to your community, right? This means... So, so now we, 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 we cut down and get past all of the struggles as far as money. Now, let me say this. Now, let me, because I'm going to go, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth. Now, check this out. In the league, you have individuals and you have groups. So you have groups, you have individuals that belong to the league. The individual is, is initiated into the league, regardless of what that initiation is. The elders could come together, some nation builders come together, and we decide what the curriculum is for an individual to go through. But then also we have organizations that belong to the league. So an individual and an organization can have a vote. So you got a group of organizations, you have a group of individuals, all of us get votes. 
You understand? So uh, 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 an individual could belong to a group within a league. So that individual gets a vote, and that in, and that, and the organization that that individual belongs to, if it belongs to the league, also gets a vote. So now what we have is all these organizations and all these individuals sitting up under one other umbrella called the league or called the government or whatever we want to call it that speaks for and works toward bringing um bringing what we need into our community change focus on building bring value to our community yeah because it's not it's not see we we need money don't get me wrong but we need the right attitude so that when we get the money we know what to do with it because if we go and we not wind up getting money right now we start moving to the suburbs we start separating ourselves from our people because we haven't been educated we haven't we haven't been hit with the challenging ideas at least the majority of us have not been hit with the challenging ideas where boom where our people are is where we need to establish our borders and we need to start owning it. what's up sir how you doing y'all feel me y'all feel me shouts out to brother kwame thank you for for tuning in um of course i'm looking for your feedback i would love to have your feedback right um um, thank you, Sister Jill, for, 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 um, for throwing some stuff out, right? So now, also within the league, I mean, you got different aspects that have come out of this. So now, where do we start? We start with, you ready? We start with the celebrations. We start with the celebrations, right? One of the major celebrations we start with is making sure that Kwanzaa is hot. No sugar at all. Thank you. We make sure Kwanzaa is the shit you know every so we start organizing around our holidays our sacred days the days where we acknowledge um, um where we acknowledge our african roots where we acknowledge where we are so that we can always refocus ourselves during these holidays and recommit to what we're doing right that's what the league first do right now of course as we start growing and 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 in kwanzaa becomes um a fundraiser and juneteenth become a fundraiser and marcus garvey's birthday come up become a form fundraiser a mentor's holiday become a fundraiser and we got members in the league that are paying dues and we have organization that's paying dues we'll start building up capital that the administration that has been elected for that four-year period to move forward, move forward on an agenda that would do great things for our people. Well, not even great. Let's say start with small things. But I'm telling you, if we start operating like this, within 10 years, within 10 years, we'll be able to produce jobs within the community. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely, we're going to definitely talk about Kwanzaa because Kwanzaa is the first step now. This and this is a whole nother piece, right? I know some people probably the organization that I have been able to to watch from afar for the years that I've been separated is Tawi Village. They've been consistent. They're very transparent with the funds. And one of the things we need to be we need to start is one start supporting that organization, and then also start moving the elders into forming this government, right? Boom. You know what I'm saying? We already got an organization that could be used for that. Next city by Kwanzaa Planning Meeting is this Wednesday, September 6, 6.30 at the Livingston Library. Um, see you there. I might be there. You know what I'm saying? I'll be on the phone or something. Y'all know. I get out here and get it, right? Because I'm building. But I, I ain't more than likely I'll be there. I'm, since she done called me out and put it up there like that. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, that's one major celebration that we can start really financing we can start funding and we can start building upon so that we can move towards where we need to be we can start producing the leaders that we need to take this to the next level and some of us got to realize i'm not going to be a marcus scott i'm not going to be the next malcolm x i'm not going to i realize that but it's a possibility that clay gina sasha could be that right it's a possibility that some of your children could be that but we got to establish the foundation from which they could work. And we got to show them that there's value in what we have, family. We got to, we got to demonstrate to them that there's value 
in what we're building. Visit Columbus Kwanzaa 365 Facebook page. Go to Kwanzaa 365 um, Facebook page. I will be asking what I can do to help, but Wednesday is one of my tutoring days. Hence, won't be there. It's cool. Well, you don't, I mean, and all of us don't have to be there all the time. You know what I'm saying? It's just a matter of, like, for example, Jill is handling business. So, you know, you know what I'm saying? I'm confident because everything I done asked her to do as far as whenever we needed it done, shit, she got it done. You know what I'm saying? So my vote go with what she suggests. My vote go with that. I could trust her. You know what I'm saying? Because when people do what they was going to do, it's a certain vibe that they throw off. She's always seeking consensus. That's called leadership. You don't have to be there to help. Right. You don't have to. You know what I'm saying? But what we have to do, we have to start making sure that we able to at least start directing some funds towards these type of organizations. And then we are able to expand from there. Because we got to start getting out of, you know, this, uh, we all got to be part of the same thing. No, see, because Tawi can be, Tawi can be the heart. Then we can have another organization that could be the brain. Then we can have another organization that could be the arms. And we got another organization that could be the feet. We are organism, family. Right? That's how we grow. That's how we build. You know what I'm saying? Our ancestors and our creator has already laid out the 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 the, 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 the blueprint for us. As above, so below. We don't have to look up at the stars. All we gotta do is look at our body. The heart is not trying to be the stomach. The stomach is not trying to be the spleen. The spleen is not trying to be the heart. The heart is not trying to be the brain. The hand is not trying to be the foot. They each do their part and serve the whole. The only thing we have to start establishing is the whole and making sure that we all are part of the same organism. How do we do that? We we give birth to people through our initiation process. Sister Jill say, there are many ways to contribute. Inbox me and let me know what you want to do. Word. So, so, um, brother Kwame, um, I'm working on your stuff. Culture is, co culture is an organism. So you say, you understand what I'm saying? Culture is an organism. So what we have to do is we have to start building up their organism. All this I learned from learning by by brewing the kombucha. See y'all. See, when I get into shit, I'm not just looking at it from. Um, uh, a single boom, or I can make money from this drink. No, I'm learning from that microorganism, and it kind of hurts my heart that something called a scoby, a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast, seems to be smarter than my people. That bothers me. I can't be outsmarted by something that I keep in a motherfucking bucket. Right? When when I put the green tea and the honey into a, in, into the bucket with the scoby, the scoby seals it off. Will not allow any other bacteria and yeast in there, and if there is anything in there, it kills it. It makes sure that 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 organism is the only thing that's able to eat in there. Everything else is destroyed. And we have to understand that. Because I want y'all to think about America. America is just like that. This is, every country is like that. They formulate borders. And anybody that does not belong within those borders, either you're paying to be there or you're respecting the laws being within that border. If you don't, you are eliminated. Family, we got to be bold enough to do that shit. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just throwing it out there. You know what I'm saying? When a politician comes into our community, we want to have enough people that they know they got to come talk to us. As a matter of fact, we start producing our own politicians. By the time I'm 60, I want to be able to do what um, uh, Dr. Kelsey did to me. Right, brother? I need you to go and be on this commission. You know what I'm saying? We all need to be putting ourselves in positions so that we can start concentrating and collecting power so that we can actually start directing the policies, not just of the community that we in, but of the city. So I need y'all to check. I need y'all to really understand, that, right? Because this is the only way we're going to get what we deserve as a people, as a group. You know what I'm saying? You know, nobody, nobody respects a crime. Nobody respects somebody that, that, that's begging. Y'all don't respect nobody that's coming to y'all begging family. 
So why why do we expect our enemies to want to respect us? Please tell me. You know what I'm saying? You know, if I have to help you, why should I? We need to make sure people understand that it's to their benefit to help us because if they don't help, then we have an organized arm that will go out here and cause enough confusion to make you want to help us. See, because a lot of us don't, we don't take into account that most of us are where we are right now because our ancestors were not able to compete in the system. Most of us are a check away from bankruptcy because our ancestors were not given the ability to compete. We don't have shit in a sense because others came in and took it. And, and what we have to start making sure is the motherfuckers can't just walk up in and take it because sometimes it's better, it's better, it's better just to lead this motherfucker. Right? It's better just, you know what I'm saying? Boom. If you're going to take what I got, dude, you got to come hard. And we got to understand a lot of our ancestors, a lot of the uncelebrated ancestors that we really need to do research on are those who died fighting to protect what they had. Because what I'm talking about, we already had, because I'm telling you, UNIA and the ACL, African Communities League, Marcus Garvey had it. You can look at you can look at all of the black cities, all you know, um, all of they had this, and we have to understand, family, is able to be done because Marcus Garvey said himself, "What has been done, what man has done, man can do." So, I just thought I would share that. You know what I'm saying? We have to start forming our own leagues in our own cities. You know what I'm saying? And we have to really start learning where we stand you know what i'm saying what do your polit politician stands when it when it comes to you peace shouts out to brother shocker shouts out to my aunt sonya nally shouts out to stephanie bridges thank you for joining us if you have any comments post them up i don't i can't do the call now because i'm up at the uh shisha lounge and nobody will hear you so you know let's just do it let's just you know i'm just gonna run my mouth so any comments I'm waiting for any comments. Um, hold on for one second. Got to do the do the show effects on um on my radio show. I know y'all can't hear that, but it is what it is. Taking a small commercial break. I need y'all to understand that this is being brought to you by Giami Journey, that Ambrosia, G and J's, that Ambrosia. You know what I'm saying? You know, so now, so family, is there any comments, questions? Let's talk. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know some of y'all sitting on them keyboards. What's your thoughts on, on on forming our own league? Is it important? Is it something we shouldn't focus on? Because a lot of these issues we hit, right? We hit as separate individuals separate individual groups right and i'm not saying give up your organization what i'm saying is if it's a valid idea let's start forming these leagues and i'm and i'm suggesting that you know we start one in columbus i'm in columbus shaka you in cleveland ain't no reason why uh a league can't be built there right in the league of course you're gonna have political arm you're gonna have an economic arm now the two major offices that i've decided that I'm thinking are important is one, a chief. Of course, they call him a president or whatever. Chief or, you know, male or female, whatever that is, and a treasurer. Keep it simple. We want somebody to be able to approach and have an agenda, get people to vote on the agenda, and be able to carry out the people's agenda. And we need somebody to manage the money. Separate from elected separately from the individual that is in charge and we have a process for spending money that's transparent so that everybody in the league especially the organizations can all see where the money is going period can you imagine if if a league like this 
gets 5,000 members. What would happen in the city politically? Let's say you get a group of 5,000 like that, and we focus and say we're going to take over a certain area. We're going to get on the commission. We're going to say a store has to have this quali these qualifications to do this because it will be fair. I know people are going to be like, oh, no, it's not fair. You can't do that. You know what I'm saying? If we have an area that's 98% black, there's no reason why that store should be a store within that community. should be owned by anybody but somebody black. We have communities in Columbus where the, the, the residents of the community is 98% black. All of the economic resources is going to somebody else. Whether it's rent or whether it's them going to the store and buying a 40 ounce. All that money is going outside the community. You know what I'm saying? And there's no organization that can have a negative trade and survive. None. There has to be a circulation of money. We know this. Even though money is not the major priority. And we need to have a recycling, a cycling of our personal skills and our personal resources very simple you know what i'm saying every league need to have its own farm whether it's indoor or outdoor we need to be able to provide fa our families with a place where they could come and buy certain things from us and then in the league we can also take pledges that there's certain things that we only buy from us you know hey i just all right. i mean i know i know it's kind of shocking for some but it's, it's, it's necessary, family. It's necessary. We getting our ass kicked politically. We getting our ass kicked economically. And you know, I, you know, I have, I'm not, I, I, I don't like losing. How about you? You know what I'm saying? I don't like losing. And there's no reason we should lose with all the talents and skills that we have. There's no reason why why we can't form a league that wouldn't in the next in the next 20, 30 years be able to be able to buy a professional team if that's what we choose, or be able to open up a uh, have enough money to open up a motherfucking casino if that's what we choose, or or be able to to buy up a whole um, uh, three or four blocks, putting modern homes there, and being able to put our people in there affordably, and being able to provide hundreds of people with with fresh, fresh veggies all year round it's the technology is out there for that shit no but what we doing is we're taking our money and we're sending our kids to school we sending them to an education institution that's designed higher education a higher educational institution that's designed to keep us oppressed that's what those universities were designed for they do research on how to keep everybody down and, and train you to go work for those organizations and there's no reason why a league like this cannot take control of the education process of the children we could be able to challenge policies that will get that that you know like they got this this thing called no child left behind you know what i'm saying is it really working for us are we educating our kids to move black folks into the 21st century because the because the underlying problem that i don't think a lot of us really realize is that if america and african american well let's better yet let's say let's say like this if african americans don't get it together soon america's gonna suffer and we have to make people understand that our interest is their best interest I know a lot of y'all don't, don't dig that. Y'all might not be able to see that. Right? So, right. And Brother Shaka put in here UNIA. A lot of people live out the other part of the UNIA. It was the UNIA. I'm going I'm to type it up here for y'all. UNIA. I'm going to do it all caps. All caps. UNIA slash ACL. That's the proper name. See, we only want to talk about, and we have been educated to only talk about the United Negro um, um, UNIA, United Negro Improvement Association, right? But we never talk about the Africans Community League. That is the other part of the name that we often leave out. And that is the part 
where it's the government arm. You know what I'm saying? See, because when we talk about the UNIA, it allows us to focus on Marcus Garvey, who does deserve focus. But then we have to understand that in order for Marcus Garvey to do the shit he did, Marcus Garvey didn't go out and get a printing press by his motherfucking self and print all the papers by his mother. No, there was a team of individuals that was behind him. And we don't need that. We need to focus and study on Marcus Garvey. Yes, but we also need to study the team that was behind him. We need to study the team that was behind Martin Luther King. We need to study the team that was behind Malcolm X. What were these teams doing to propel these individuals to where they are, to where every day, I mean, we think about it. It was the crew. And see, what, what this society get us to, to start start thinking about is that, that, that single hero idea. See, but we have to understand that our ancestors with developing the hero myth, we have to understand that what the hero myth says to us is that this is you so when we talk about Heru we're not talking about a being we're talking about you in the original myth of Jesus we weren't talking about an actual person we was talking about you we're talking you know what I'm saying so, so the hero myth so as other people start taking our hero myth we started focusing that the focus was putting it on that individual and then we start arguing about whether the individual existed or not. The universal black orphan and all those, you know what I'm saying, boom, where did they come from, right? Brother Casey talked about that. But now we need to change the story because we have to understand that the myth is designed to inspire you. This And, and what a lot of us don't really realize is that those myths were used in the rites of passage. So the struggle that the hero actually went through was part of the rites of passage process that the that the that the initiate went through so that you can so that you can understand how the culture was built and understand that you play an important part but at the same time it's kind of a paradox at the same at the same time you play an important part but at the same time you're just part of something greater as one of my um older brothers would say he says I am no higher than a blade of grass, but I'm no lower than his roots. These myths have been put on us, family, and we're following them. And because we're following them, we start losing because we're, 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 we're we've been taught to interpret shit from an alien perspective, a perspective outside ourselves. And what's even what's even colder. See, because I, you know, I have to look at it and be like, damn, let's go. What's even colder, family, is this. The people that's teaching us that, they don't even follow it the way that they're teaching us to follow it. You understand what I'm saying? They teach us to follow it in a way that's detrimental to us. But in private, when they're initiating their own, because I want you to understand, they are initiating their own family. Do y'all understand that? What I'm talking about is already going on. Like I told y'all before, we have surrendered the whole idea of the secret society to some to to some uh, white amorphous group. When in fact, when you go into an African village, every African village had a secret society. I mean, that's, that's our shit. That's our shit. So if it's ours, where is our secret societies? These are the initiation groups that would bring men into, bring boys into manhood, bring women into womanhood, understanding the importance of the culture and the importance for them to protect it. The crucifixion, the crucifixion is an initiation process. Heru battle and set is an initiation process. Y'all understand? Y'all understand? So, this is why I study folk tales. This is why I study men. This is why I don't argue with people about religious beliefs. Because a long time ago, it was brought to my attention. It was brought to my attention that that is just a, a diversion. See, I could, I, I, I could read about Jesus and not be affected. You know why? 
because I read the principles that Jesus stood for. I read the principles that Muhammad stood for. I read the principles that Heru stood for. I read the principles, not the person. I'm getting the principles. You see, you, you often have people debating the existence of these people, but you never have people debating the core beliefs that these individuals supposedly have. Because when you start debating the principles, you start seeing that there is a connection between Christianity and Kemetic. You see the connection between Kemetic and Islam. You see the connection between uh, Kemetic and Buddhist. You see the connection between the more. You see the connection rather than the differences. Um, Shaka Sion, um, Brother Kwame say, absolutely. Shouts out to my brother Juan Rollins. Good to see you up on here. Brother Shaka says the Black Phoenix Artist Society is recruiting members as we speak. Anyone interested, inquire at the mind of Shaka at gmail.com. Um, Jill Lundy, join. You know what I'm saying? Because the whole piece is family. Listen. Listen. Our ancestors have laid down the tools for us. Period. The answer is already here. Right? As above, so below. If you never open another book, the answer is already there. Just remember some of the folk tales. Right? Remember the folk tales. Right? They tell you what to watch out for. Remember the myths. Take yourself through process. Right? Because, because our ancestors believed in systematic process. This is one of the pieces I keep trying to tell y'all. This is why I said the 21 day challenge. Right? Because it's a process. But of course they take the process and they make it a game. Shit. So we put it on Facebook and, and I say 21 day and goose I would challenge them motherfuckers think it's just one of the, like the ice ice cold challenge and shit like that. No I'm Nick I ain't trying to raise no money. The shit I'm doing is free. If you want to give money you can but the shit that I'm doing is free because I'm trying to plug you into some ancestral wisdom. For 21 days can you look at some of the proverbs that was dropped by your ancestors? For 21 days can you change the days of the week and start looking for your principles? For 21 days can you start studying the proverbs and the folk tales in the midst of your ancestors and start reprogramming your mind, changing the software that's been put inside of you? Kill them viruses so that we could grow together. That's it. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like I said, with the with the league, what I'm talking about is formulating and creating a government so that we could guide where we need to go. And most of my people in my circle, we old enough to do this shit now. We're mature enough to do it. Most of us can't be tempted like we were in, in, in our youth. You, I can expect a 20-year-old to be tempted when he don't have nothing else to look forward to. Right? We can expect that. But when you get up into your late 40s, early 50s and shit, and you still able to be tempted by some goddamn sex and a few dollars, nigga, you need to be you need to be executed. Because it's deeper than that. You I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, because think about this. Every other culture has consequences for a motherfucker selling them out. Especially an old motherfucker, because you don't got excuse. You don't have no excuse. Right? You know what I'm saying? I, we don't, you don't have an excuse. I have to get up and I have to look at my daughters every day and I have to wonder what in the fuck type of future is going to be there for them. I was just riding home yesterday. Well, no, the, uh, I was riding home on Nia, right? Um, coming from the hookah shop because, like I said, I'm coming here because I'm trying to get the brother to finish the room. It looked good back there. I can't wait to do the first show. And as I'm riding home, I hear the story about what's going on in Syria, where uh, a dude was in his house, and all of a sudden his house started shaking, and he heard a helicopter landing in the middle of the area where he lived, and he heard his children start screaming, and he ran out to get his children, and when he ran up approaching his children, he ran up and he saw one of his children, and he saw body parts laying in pieces and he picked up his child and he started running and he gave his child to his older son and he said take this child and go and he stayed out there to face whatever was coming so that he could protect his family and give them a running start and sometimes i have to wonder how far are we away from that shit? 
when militia groups could show up to a motherfucking protest and be better on than the motherfucking police. How far are we from that shit? How far are we are away from that shit are we when a young black man could be can be a gun could be pulled out on his ass in a subway, he frisked and forced to make his order before another motherfucker because the white boy felt uncomfortable because the black boy was in there wearing a hood. How far are we from that shit? How far are we from going happen to go out and pick up our children's body parts because they just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and a motherfucker snap and there's no consequences. A league will allow us to be able to start formulating consequences. A secret society initiation process will instill in certain members in our group. Especially some of the young dudes. Come on, trying to understand this. We have young warriors in our community right now waiting. They ain't got nothing else to do. They're waiting for an opportunity to show that they're loyal to something. Waiting. They're waiting for training. They're waiting for some of the brothers to come and drop knowledge on them and give their physical bodies something to do. Give them something to build. Give them something to protect. Don't you understand that's what gangs is about? You know, and maybe it's too deep for some of you. I'm just, I, I don't know. Shouts out to Sister Jill Lundy. All right, so I ain't gonna hold y'all too much longer. Believe it or not, we are almost at an hour. You know, I could do this shit all night. This is the shit that I do. I was born. I was born for this shit. Right? I was born for it. Right? So, you know, go and think about it. You know, like and share. You know what I'm saying? If you if you agree with the ideas, if you don't, put the comments up, tell me where I'm wrong. You know what I'm saying? Because the whole piece is I like to learn. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really into I'm not big on debating and shit like that. But I love getting new information. Is there another way that we could go? Is there something else we could be doing? I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, you know, and, and maybe there is some type of secret society that's working on our behalf, but I don't, you know, I've been around a long time. I, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. I've been coast to coast, I've been uh, into other lands. You know what I'm saying? And and the only thing that black folks in America could depend on is black folks. Family? Ain't nobody coming to save us. So those of y'all that's in my age grade, we need to start training young people to save themselves and to start demanding and standing up for what they deserve. Because the treatment we receive in America, we don't deserve this shit. And the only reason that it keep on coming to us is because we allow this shit. We're not politically active. We're not. We're not. We're not active with our money. You know what I'm saying? We're not acting in on our own behalf. And I'm just saying we need to start. So shouts out to everybody that's out there. You know, I want to thank everybody for uh, for stopping in for a few minutes. Um, those that want to keep on following what I'm doing, I'm gonna be doing. I do the daily toast tomorrow. I don't have to get up as early. I may get up early. I don't know. But, you know, every day we're going to do a toast. I need y'all to know that. Every day I'm doing a toast. I might speak or I might not. I don't know. But the piece is we have to start saluting our ancestors. We have to start We have to start acknowledging our principles to start building on them. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to throw up there that within the, any league that I'm going to be part of, ancestors have to be central. Because you got, I mean, you got a certain order that was taught to me. Start with not with the elders, just start with the ancestors, elders, nation builders, warriors, right? Children, right? Now, I also add one in between the elders and the nation builders, the nation maintainers, because it don't do no good to build a fucking nation and you don't have people that know how to maintain that shit. And this is the point where we are right now because a lot of us are conscious but that's not enough, it's not good enough for you just to be awake. I don't need, you know what I'm saying? It's just like in the day. You can wake up on time, but if you don't get up and get your ass up out of bed, you ain't doing nothing. You understand? So family, this is Brother Hot Tim. Unless y'all got something else, Brother Shaka says, there's a spiritual force within the people. Right. 
And the only thing now, I'm just going to just this piece that I want to kind of make sure y'all get from me. I'm into the spiritual and to get the spiritual force. But if the shit is not working, moving us forward, we need to throw that shit on the scrap heap. The five parts of it being, hmm, I don't know, secret society, shit, dude, that's what moves, that's what moves culture. See, one of the worst things, one of the worst words that happened to us in the last few years, even though it's, it, it works in certain issues, is this word called transparency, right? Barack Obama started this whole phase where we need to be transparent. Everybody don't need to know everything. Everybody don't need to know everything. everything. All things are not for all people's eyes. Right? So when we're discussing war, when we're discussing strategy, you know what I'm saying? This is like a basketball team being transparent to their opponents. All right. Okay, we all humans. We're going to get on the court and we're going to um, do everything. Give me the mic so I can give them the strategy. Uh, John, I want you to, to, to post up on that young man over there and I want you to take the, the, the last second shot. No, you keep that shit secret. Secret society. Right? That's held together by certain principles. That where you got motherfuckers that actually believe in not only the culture, but they also believe in the reciprocity that comes, and we demonstrate that shit. That's what initiation is for, so you can see some of the spiritual powers. Because they're out here, I've seen some of them. I've seen some initiation processes where you can't help but to see the spirit why the people are gathered. I went to a sun dance and it blew my motherfucking eye. Blew my mind. You know what I'm saying? Family, the Native American family gathered for that weekend. You know, we was there for almost a week. We gathered there. They built up a, a, a village. And within the time that I was there, I saw at least five miracles. I saw a motherfucker turn sand into water. I saw a motherfucker call a shooting star. It's real shit. I saw individuals hang from a tree almost three days. I'm talking about pierced. How do you do that? What the fuck? What, what the stamina? Dancing. Sitting there all night. Some people do it. I mean, because y'all, I mean, y'all got to understand, man. Our ancestors is cold. And when you really understand how this shit works, and you really start plugging in, and we start plugging in as a group, our power multiplies. Because we got ancestors just out here waiting for us. They're waiting for us to start doing monuments. They're waiting for us to really start taking our celebration seriously. They're waiting for us to start taking our libations seriously. Many of us do this shit, and we just going through the motions, not really realizing that when we call on our ancestors, family, when we call them, they're there, and you can direct them. You can tell them what you want, and as, if you are a group, it becomes even more powerful. I'm just saying, I've been seeing it. I won't go into some of the shit that I did, but there's some shit that scared me so much that I have never done it again after pouring libation. And I'm like, damn, that that's a hell of a The poor libations and watch some shit happen. Family. <laughs> it's real. It's real. So remember, like and share. Thanks. I want to send shots out to Brother Kwame. Thank you for sharing. I will see you in the morning. I'm going to go and finish. Sit down. I'm going to talk to my dude. See where we are as far as the setting up this equipment and shit. And I'm going to be on some political shit. Now. But of course, you know, I'm going to keep these discussions going. And like I said, family, listen, the idea don't stop here. Because one of y'all out there, uh, you're the spark that's going to take it to the next level. Right? We all got to understand. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just a small cell in a larger body. A larger body that you belong to. So it's time for a heart 
to start working towards the health of the body. It's time for the lungs to start working towards the health of the body. It's time for the shell, the, the cells in which we are as individuals, to start combining within the, the body part that we belong to and start making this body work. Right now, the body of the body of black folks, the, the collective body of black folks is sick. The heart doing its own thing. And the only thing that's keeping us alive is, is, is the will of our ancestors, the will of our creator. Only, that's the only thing that's keeping us alive. But now it's time for us to grow up. It's time for us to grow up. And it's time for us to start acting in the capacity in which we can act. So, this is Brother Hatem. I am out. Oh, make sure you take the 21 day challenge. Let me post this up for y'all. Post it up. I'm going to post it up on both sites. Oops, got it on cap locks. I don't want it on cap locks. Kwanzaa right around the corner, family. You need to get involved. I'm posting it up on my uh, show at this point in time on the actual podcast for those those that don't don't have time to necessarily listen while it's on the radio uh, or why it's on um, Facebook. You go straight and. I'm so hurt that this goddamn Sam this does not just lock shit in. I have to type everything out for it every time. I don't see why it just don't accept what I type. Say. Peace, fam. Good emoji on. Yes, sir. And we having a great Imani. I want to thank each and every last one of y'all. And Brother Hot Tim is out. I'm <laughs> <laughs>